Hello friends, this video on Biomolecules part 14 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Now let's start with proteins. The protein word itself is derived from proteos. Proteos. And that means prime important. The Greek word prime important. They are prime important compound for our body. They are the most abundant biomolecules of the living system. For our system, they are most important and they are most important. Their chief source is milk, cheese, then we have pulses, then we have uh, peanuts, then I have fish, then I have meat. All these are my chief source of protein. Please remember uh, milk, cheese, peanuts, fish chickens, these or meat, they are the main source of proteins. They occur in almost every part of the body. So these proteins form basis of all the structure and functions of human life. Now if you see all these proteins, as I have told, these proteins mix cells. And from the cells, you make tissues. From tissues, you make organs. For example, these organs. And from organs, you make full body. Or life, you can say. Correct? So if you see, protein is the starting material. But protein itself is made of amino acids. We'll discuss that. There are some 20 amino acids which makes protein. We will discuss that. So amino acids make proteins, proteins make cells, cells make tissues, tissues make organs and organs make body. And these proteins are required for the growth and maintenance of the body. They are very very critical. Correct? So protein derived from the word proteus is prime important. They are important and they are the source of proteins. They occur in every part of the body. You take lungs, ha. You take heart, you take brain, you take eyes, you have protein everywhere and they are required for the growth and maintenance of the body. Correct. As I told, this is the structure of protein. It's totally complicated, totally confusing, right? You will not be able to understand anything of the structure. It's totally messy, messy structure. To understand the protein, what chemists have done is they have broken this protein into amino acids and alpha amino acids to be more specific. So these proteins are made up of alpha amino acids. And we will talk about these uh, amino acids. So what are amino acids? Amino acids as the name suggests amino plus acid. Amino plus acid. The one that means it has NH2 is the amino group. Acid is COH groups. So the examples are these. These has you see it has COH group, NH group, NH2 group, COH group. These are all my amino acids. But we are interested in alpha amino acids. Let's see what is alpha amino acids. So depending on the position of the amino group with respect to the carbonyl group, we call them alpha, beta, gamma and so on. For example, this is my carbonyl group. This is alpha carbon. This is alpha, beta carbon. This is alpha beta and gamma carbon. So in this case, the amino acid is linked to my alpha carbon. So it's alpha amino acid. Amino acid is linked to beta carbon, beta amino acid, amino group linked to gamma carbon. So it's gamma amino acid. So for example, if you see, this is alpha carbon here, right? Because this is the, my carboxyl group. This is my alpha carbon. And on this carbon, my amino acid is linked. This is my alpha amino acid. So other can be one can be R and this has to be a hydrogen. So this is a general formula of amino acid where I have C carbon, one COH group, one NH2 group, and there is a one R and this R will change to give different kind of amino acid and then it has to be in hydrogen. And when it is an aqueous medium, what happens is this NH2, since basic it accepts H plus, and COH minus COH, COH actually is being acidic, it gives H plus. So this becomes CO minus and this H plus 
comes here. This ammonia lower pair attracts this H plus. So this becomes NH3 plus and this becomes CO minus. So both are acceptable structure for amino acid. This is called Zwitter ion actually. We'll discuss this later. So both are acceptable structure. So it is amino acid. Alpha amino acid is you have alpha carbon here. In this alpha carbon, you have an amino group and you have a carboxyl group, one R and one H. Correct? This is my alpha amino acids. And the naming of this, if you see, they have a tribal name. They dip, the, the name generally reflects the property of that compound or its source. For example, if you see glycine, it is named glycine. Why? Because it is sweet taste. Glycose means sweet taste. Greek. This is my glycine. Right? This is my alpha carbon. And I have a hydrogen instead of here R is my hydrogen and NH2 group and COH2. Also, if you see tyrosine, it is was obtained from cheese, and cheese means tyros in Greek. So this is tyrosine actually, if you see. This is a COH group. This is my alpha carbon, right? This is a nit NH2 group here, and this is my one R group. So this is also this is obtained from cheese, so it is called tyrosine. And these amino acids are generally represented by three letter symbol. Sometimes even one letter also. Why? Because there are only twenty such amino acids known. So we have, if you take one letter, we have twenty option to name twenty six amino acids. But since only twenty are named there, so we can even denote them by one letter. And then one letter may not be the starting letter of the amino acid. We'll go through all the twenty amino acids. So these are twenty. Amino acids will go through. You see, this is alanine. Three letter is ALA and one letter is A. Example, you see, this is glutamic acid. Three letter is GLU, but one letter is E. Why E? Because G is already used by glycine. Because there are so many acids. For example, G, glutamic acid, glutamine, glycine, all start with G. So only one can get G letter. So the one letter word may not be the starting letter of a amino acid. Correct. So you can classify amino acid based on their acidic property, whether it's acid, base, or neutral. Oh, so if the number of uh, carboxyl group and the number of amino group is same, it is neutral. For example, alanine. So if you see, there is one NH2 group, one carboxyl group. It is neutral. So if you have more number of amino group and less number of carboxyl group, it is basic. For example, I have one. Two amino group, three amino group, those amino group, four amino group, and one carboxyl group, right? Since it has more amino group and less carboxyl group, amino group is basic. So overall, this is basic. It is basic. The next is if you have more carboxyl group and less amino group, then it is acidic. For example, this is one carboxyl group, one carboxyl group, and only one amino group. Two carboxyl group, one amino group. Then it is acidic. Right. For example, is aspartic acid. We will discuss about all these acid in detail. Just understand that we classify uh, amino acids based on their uh, pH value or acidic and basic property as acidic, basic, or neutral amino acid. We can also classify acids, amino acids, as essential and non-essential amino acids. The one which can be synthesized by the body will be non-essential, and the one which Cannot be synthesized by our body, and it has to be obtained from the diet. Are called essential amino acids. So we'll discuss about both uh, essential and non-essential amino acids. Now we'll talk about the properties of amino acids before we go into a little. We we go deep into the prop uh, all the twenty amino acids. So we will talk about the properties of amino acid. They are usually colorless, crystalline solids. For example, if you see this is how amino acid looks like. They are water soluble. They have high melting point, and they behave like salt. Why? Because they have both acidic and basic group attached. So there's a basic group and acidic group attached in the same molecule, so they behave more like salt. Now we'll talk about a 
important concept called Zwitter ion. So what happens is if you take a amino acid, this is my amino acid, this is my carbon, alpha carbon, this is the NH2 group attached, this is R, there is the H and there is the COH2. Correct? So this amino acid, when you put in the aqueous medium, this is the aqueous medium water. So what happens is this carboxyl group says it is acidic, it will lose H plus. And this ammonia acid that has lone pair, it will accept this H plus. What will form is this guy, NH3 plus and CO minus. Correct? So this is zwitterion. So overall this is neutral. Overall this is neutral because it has positive and negative charge. But it has, CO has a negative charge, NH3 has a positive charge. Right? So this is in this zwitter ionic form, the amino acid shows amphoteric behavior because they act both as acid and base. This is deuterion concept in the aqueous medium. Please note this happens only in aqueous medium. That's why we have this water here. Now we'll talk about the optical activity of amino acid. See, except, except glycine, all other naturally occurring alpha amino acids are optically active. Why? Because if you see, this was this is my amino acid, alpha amino acid. So this has COH, R, NH2, all different group attached. H, all are different. So all are optically active except glycine. Why is he? See, glycine, if you see, there are two hydrogen attached. So there is no possibility of optical activity. For example, but if you see alanine, this is CH3, this is H. So if you flip it, this becomes H and CS3. So this is optically active. But in this case, glycine, there is no scope of optical activity. So glycine is the only alpha amino acid where optical activity is not seen, but other optical activity is seen, and they are seen in D and L form. Right? And most of the natural occurring is in the L form. L means what? L means left, that is. NH2 will be on the left side. This is L. This is L. This is R. This is D form and this is L form. This is most popular. Correct? So please note all the amino acid except lysine shows optical activity. They have D and L form and most of them shows L form and L means NH2 will be on the left hand side. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online tests, get free study materials, find tutors and mentors and much more. Thanks once again.